If you don't know, blogtv.com, uh, last day is, to, is today. They're merging with some website called YouNow, and I thought I'd maybe just kind of put a bookmark in my YouTube channel and talk about my experiences. So I, I did a little write-up about it. So uh, here it is. I'd like to share it with you, and I hope you enjoy it. Well, the year started, it was all in 2007, in October, where out of the blue I was let go from a place I thought I was a part of. Somewhat looking for a family, but in fact all I was was a soldier doing the bidding of the masters. And I say that in code because honestly it's not yet time for me to tell you the whole truth. It's just not safe right now. But that's a whole nother story. It was a rough ending to the year, and even worse timing as well, as the new thing back at the end of 2007 was the downfall of the economy was starting to take place. So then I was thrust into a new world where everyone says we're not hiring. During that time, I started to make the Gifts Submitted uh, album, which was my first Christian album, because I needed encouraging music that didn't remind me of work. But that's another story. The year was not completely lost as I finally made my first debut on MTV, featured on an interview of T Pain's covering his song Buy You a Drink on the Top Box. And the explosion of phone calls, recognition, and respect really made me feel good. It's like I, I did something, you know. And that was a glimmer of the dream. Well, we're rolling into 2008 and I was struggling for a while. Freelancing was nil because. It was very close-knit, and spring was around the corner. I started to work for an installation company, hanging TVs and running wires. It was not the dream I have, but it was work, and it actually went belly up. So, because of the whole economy thing. But this was a time when YouTube was more closely knitted together. Broadcasters were more intimate. The nation and the world was reeling from new stars being born like Tay Zande, Soulja Boy, Justin Bieber, and the explosive popularity of Ty TKO, Alexis K. Tyler, things like that. And I was still feeling the effects of covering Soulja Boy's Crank That Soulja Boy on the Tall Box, which to this day is the most viewed video on YouTube featuring Tall Box in the title. Look it up and check the view count. I found word that Tanya would be broadcasting on a new website from one of her videos on YouTube and this is some new website I never heard of I believe based in Israel called blog TV so coming back from a long day's work and secondhand smoke breaks because that's all they did at that job I would catch the tail end of the shows and finally I came home on time and found something I found out that this was something new her following on her YouTube success came with her for a chance to interact with her live she had a phone line that people would call in and voice in their opinions on the topics of the day. The chat room would fly by and you had to have quick fingers to voice your opinion, a quick mind, a quick thoughts. There was something new in the world of repetition. You could see that people who watched on her on YouTube Live, well, you could see people who watched on, you could see people who broadcast on you, you could see people who made videos on YouTube broadcast live. And if you said something cool, they would respond back, and a connection was made. On Fridays, I could feel the excitement in the air as Philip DeFranco started to broadcast from his place in Atlanta. A countdown would start, and there would be no image. And the administrators would feature his channel on the front page, and I would stand in awe as the viewer count would rise from the 100s to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands and beyond. And if you could get in the main room, you could see that it was packed and the chat room would fly by. Other friends that you met on YouTube or blog TV would be on there. And trolls simply had no place because there simply was no room. As each room's capacity was only 100 screen names. So I said if they could do it, why couldn't I? So I tried it. So really laid back, maybe hoping some follower or friend from out there would come to watch me. So in the summer of 2008, I joined blog TV. And I broadcast, and for the first time, it was just me sitting with a screen with a picture of myself in, in the top right. Admin, Dilio T2K in blue. And then maybe a screen name, random screen name would appear, and I'd say, Haley, can you see me? What's up? And then that screen name would disappear. 
it was a really slow start but after a while friends I made from YouTube would start to come by and I would schedule shows on Friday nights as well I was making new direct contacts from blog TV and they would started to come new friends and it was awesome people wanted to be there you know they they would check and see if I was broadcasting and and they would come out of their own free will which made their presence that much more sincere to me because I didn't have to beg them to come. And in a world full of work and people being distant in real life, I had some friends I could hang around. And the numbers grew from 1 to 20. I would use my expertise to make sound effects and laugh tracks, and I would speak in my radio voice and manage multiple computers and screens, all off the shot of the camera. And I would make sure, keeping a meter right in my face, that the audio wouldn't distort. And um, I would try to come up with schedules, come up with trivia games, and call people through Skype and talk live on Top Box. And I would play instrumentals and play something I called the freestyle game, where um, they would type one letter, well, one syllable words, or even multi syllable words, but one word, and I would freestyle to a beat and use the words that they type into the beat and try to rap it. And it was real fun. Not to mention that Blog TV was was wherever the internet was, so I did a broadcast at a friend's house with him playing guitar and me having fun singing the night away. And I was promoting my music most of all. And I was actually selling music. My YouTube channel was growing and I was visited by internet celebrities like Philip DeFranco, Niga Higa, and you know, just to name a few out of more. And um even during his last promotional campaign on Block TV, I was actually visited by uh, Montel Jordan. Um, there were some times where he would hang out late. And that was the broadcast I didn't want to end because I was virtually rubbing elbows with a celebrity who has recorded one of the most recognizable records of our time called This Is How We Do It. Soaking up all the information he could pour out, I would, I would listen and we would have a dialogue back and forth. And what do you know? Blog TV featured me doing top box and making music on the front page. I made it, right? Well, I was having fun, but it was a lot of work to make all this work at the same time and smile and try to do something to make sure that the show was entertaining. As the positives grew, so did the negatives. See, I ran a strict room where I didn't allow anyone to use the N-word and I came from a traditional IRC JavaScript background from the late 90s back when we used to use dial-up to go online you know dee -dee -boo, right and you know we didn't type in caps all the time back then you know not abstain from using profanity on a show even though everyone else who broadcast just about did and even though I did that I did play music uncut but I figured that was my middle ground you know, that was my balancing ground. And I figured that this would be uh, a way to, to filter out those who were kind of idiots, you know. And it worked. You know, someone come in saying, type in caps is who I am. And I say, well, be who you are somewhere else. And, you know, people would get into fights on my shows sometimes. Especially females. I, I don't know what it was. And since I was the girl on the screen, everybody's watching me to see how I respond. I had to kind of be referee and find a way to sort it out all in real time. Um, because I wanted to make sure everybody was happy to some extent. And slowly I went from broadcast entertainer to referee to tech support and customer service. And I was trying to escape from that world and be myself and relax. But I guess my downfall was that I cared and I had knew how to fix it. But I wanted to have fun and not work. And there were those in the audience who accepted me who I am in the beginning, but then started to be offending by those same things that I did in the beginning. And that was confusing. And Blog TV's popularity was slowly declining. The climate was changing. Friends who I thought were close would show up less and less. I mean, Blog TV's popularity was slowly declining. And I was discouraged because the main features on the front page were people that didn't look like me. Real life was happening in the real world, where people who you thought were close friends suddenly had other things to do. Some friends had to move on, 
Some who were extremely active in the show and would change the whole environment when their name would show up in blue and make my job easier would suddenly disappear without a trace. Individuals who would check on their own because they wanted to be there turned into viewers that would not come unless you begged them to. Some screen names would disappear exactly at the same time others would appear on a repeat basis. I never said anything about it, but I noticed it. And I wanted everyone to be active, to try. I wanted everyone to have a good experience. And I just wanted everyone to be happy, but no matter how you try, you know that's not a realistic perspective. Dealing with the fact that those who watched you a lot were no longer interested in doing so anymore. The climate was changing. The celebrities of the time moved on to other things like U-String. They were already famous and didn't need to promote like I did. And I wasn't famous like Tyron TKO or Philip DeFranco, so there was always room for a troll or two to come in and try and stir things up. Even myself, I lost interest because how do you feel when you go from nothing to having a large captive audience, new friends, collapse, feature celebrities, and going back to almost having nothing? You know, you knew... Your friends met well, but life never stopped happening in the real world so that they would stop coming for a while. And the feeling of remembering when people like Phil said, hey, yeah, we're going to work together. We're going to do something. But then it never happened, you know. And the conclusion of Macho Jordan not coming to Block TV anymore because, he, well, he moved on. Uh, how do you feel? When you are featured on the front page of Block TV with 400 plus views, but only a handful of views in the chat room. I think people fail to realize that broadcasting on Block TV was a two-way street, where you share ideas back and forth. Like two cups with only one of them full of water, pouring itself out completely into the other, and the other would pour itself out completely back. And honestly, even I became less interested, but here we are. I broadcast from time to time facing the end of an era that started for me in 2008 and shut out in 2013. And I have to say it was a good ride. Not perfect, not always easy, but good. And I've connected with many viewers in a way that I never had imagined and I hope to do so in the future with those who stayed. And I also hope to make new friends and hopefully reconnect with old ones. So with that, I say thank you Blog TV and goodbye.